Good morning and welcome to Worship Online with Grosio Presbyterian Church. I'm Phil Reed, pastor of this beautiful church. It's a beautiful day in Michigan today and it's great to be outside enjoying this weather. I love the light, the sunlight in Michigan. It has a great color, an amber color to it. I think it is the light of heaven shining down upon us. We're starting a new fall schedule today, and we are now announcing our theme for this program year. It's belonging. We belong to God. We belong to God's people. We belong to God's story, a story that tells us who we are and what our lives could be about. And we belong to one another as the Church of Jesus Christ. This whole year, we're going to celebrate belonging and sort of ring the changes on this theme in a variety of ways. We have a way to visualize our belonging, and it is as a jigsaw puzzle. Like we are all pieces that fit together, that form a beautiful picture of what God is doing in the world and who God is working with to do what God is doing. We love puzzles at our house, especially my wife, Marguerite. She has a way of doing a puzzle, and perhaps you follow this same strategy. She lays out all the edge pieces and then makes the border first. As we consider belonging, we're going to ask you to consider another strategy for doing a puzzle. Instead of going from the outside in, let's work from the inter, inside out. We start with the center. We start with the center because when God is building things, God starts at the center. When God builds a person, God doesn't start with the outside, what they look like or the color of their skin or their hair. God starts with the inside, who they are and who they can become. That's the same way with a church. When God is building a church, God doesn't start with the facility itself, not with the building. God starts with the people who the people are and their faith and their willingness to heed God's call and participate in what, is God, what God is doing in the world. So, for a while, let's start with the center. Let's see ourselves as a puzzle and our church as a puzzle. It is a puzzle sometimes and God's people in the world is a puzzle. And God is starting in the center to build you and me into a beautiful picture of God's people in the world fulfilling God's great story. Friends, on this beautiful day, let us worship God. We love God puzzles. It's so satisfying to put all the pieces together in just the right order. Everything fits and we have a beautiful picture. We usually start a puzzle by piecing together the outer edge. It feels right to have a boundary and it's easier to find where every piece fits. Nothing outside the boundary and we know where everything should go. But let's imagine another way no edge, no boundary. Let's start at the center. Let's start at the heart. Let's start where God starts. When God pieces together a creation, whether it is a person or a church, God does not start with the outward appearance or the outer edge. God knows where everything and everyone belongs. They belong at the heart. There is no edge. There is no limit. Everyone belongs to God's boundless creation, drawn in by God's boundless love. 
and no one will be edged out. Yet if thy voice in life's midday recalls my soul, then I obey in faith and hope, earth I resign, secure of hell. For I am thine, I am thine, oh, I am thine. What sweet comfort, I am thine, I am held. Lo, 
Satan strains to snatch his prey. I feel his grasp. Must I give way? He harms me not. I fear no loss. For here I lie beneath the cross. I am thine. sweet comfort I am thine I am held by a hand both strong and kind what sweet comfort I am thine my God my Lord, you by thy hand upon the earth once more I stand. Let's see. Let us pray. Open your scriptures to us now, O Lord. May we hear your word in such a way that it reveals a new understanding and a call to proclaim its message to others. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me for another children's moment today. My name is Miss Grace, and today I have a brand new puzzle. Um, but there's a lot of pieces here, and I'm not really sure how to put them together. Um, so I'm hoping that you guys can give me a hand. So let's look at this puzzle. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Hmm, this, well, this is a corner piece. This just looks maybe like sky, like there's blue sky. This, hmm, I can't tell what this is at all. It's just, there's some black, there's some brown, blue, and white. This, oh, this, this looks like it might, that's a hand, so that might be part of a person. Hmm, this, whoa, <laughs> I can't, oh, is it fur? Maybe there's fur on this one. Maybe that's what that is. This, uh, hmm, can't tell what this is at all. Just looks like, I mean, it's pretty, but I don't know what it is. Let's see about this. Hmm, oh, oh, look, look, there's an eye on that one. Okay, maybe that'll help us. You know what? All these pieces look different, don't they? Some have blue in them, some have brown, some are shaped differently, like this one is a corner. They all look different, but they're all part of the same puzzle. Let's go ahead and put this puzzle together and see what it looks like. a lot of fun. So all those puzzle pieces looked different, but even they, though they were all so different, they all belonged to the same puzzle. They all belonged to one puzzle, even though they were so different. And you know what? We're really different too, aren't we? We as people are really different. We are different ages. We're different sizes. We like different things. We're good at different things. Um, our families are different. Our hair, eye, and skin color are different. We live in different places, sometimes different countries. We're all so, so different. Now, we're not exactly like puzzle pieces, but we all belong. Do you know who we belong to? Even though we were all so different, we all belong to God. And belonging to God means that we know that God loves us, that God loves us no matter what, no matter what we do, even when we make mistakes, even if we hurt people, even if we're angry at God, God loves us no matter what, because we belong to God. And belonging to God also means that we know that God is with us no matter what we're going through. If we're having a really happy time, we know that God is with us. If we're having a really hard time, if we're really sad, we know that God is with us because we belong to God. Every single person in the whole wide world belongs to God. So just like these puzzle pieces were all different, but they belong to one puzzle, we're all different, but we all belong to God. And that's some really, really great news. Will you guys pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for letting us belong to you. We are so grateful that we know that we belong to you. Help us remember that we belong to you and that every person in the world belongs to you. And help us to love everyone just like you do. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.
join me in the prayer of confession. Almighty God, we come to you now as pieces of your creation. We come because we know we are broken and are living apart from where we ought to be. In our self-centeredness, we arrogantly stand around the edges, convinced that we see the whole picture and know where each person must fit in. Please forgive us. Forgive our inability to see beyond ourselves and help us to respond as you pull us in and put us together to be more than we could ever be alone. Show us how we belong. Amen. Hear this good news. God loves us, forgives us, and creates us to belong. And nothing anyone can say or do will separate us from this boundless love. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Our theme is belonging this year, and one of the ways that we want to show and experience our deep belonging to one another is by passing the peace of Christ. These words that I'm about to say come from Jesus himself. Jesus said these words when he appeared to his disciples who were locked in the upper room. After he was raised, after he came back from the dead, Jesus appeared to them, and the first thing he said was, peace be with you. Imagine the risen Christ saying these very words to you in this moment. Peace be with you. The response is, and also with you. Please take a moment right now to share this peace with someone. Someone who's in the room with you or someone who you can communicate by text or email or some other way in this electronic age. Even if it's writing a quick note and putting it in the mail, let us now share the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. This is how we show our belonging. We belong to God. Whether we realize this or not, whether we believe it or not, whether this makes a difference in how we live or not, it's true. At the deepest, most profound level, we belong to God. This is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, and it comes to us from the Apostle Paul. All summer long, we were on the road with Paul as he traveled throughout the Roman Empire proclaiming the good news of Jesus. Paul travels culminated in Rome, the heart of the empire. Paul's ambition, the ambition of his life, was to preach the good news of the coming of God's kingdom through Jesus at the heart of the most powerful kingdom on earth at that time, the Roman Empire. Before he got to Rome, however, Paul sent a letter to introduce himself to the Christian church that was already there. Paul's letter of introduction to the Romans is in the New Testament. We call it the letter to the Romans. In this letter, Paul introduces himself by outlining his understanding of Christian faith. Paul is writing to people he doesn't know. So instead of giving a brief bio, he tells what's in his heart and what it's in his mind about what he believes. Our scripture reading today is the heart of Paul's letter to the Romans. Paul describes our deepest belonging. No matter what is happening in our lives, we belong to God. We belong to God because God makes it happen. For Paul, the world is at a turning point. Things are falling apart. People are divided. Hostility is everywhere. But something else is also going on at the same time. Underneath it all, almost hidden, God is at work redeeming humanity. Below the surface, 
perceived by faith, not necessarily by sight. The things that divide us, the things that hurt us are in process of passing away. Paul believes God's larger story of healing and uniting all humanity is on the brink of fulfillment. I know this all sounds cosmic and perhaps too far-fetched to believe, but Paul says there are two signs that this grand overarching story is actually happening. The first sign is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus is the first fruits of the death of death itself and the rising to new life. The second sign is the presence of the Holy Spirit, encouraging us and strengthening us with a faith that nothing can sabotage. Paul believes that God has called and chosen, even elected, people at this turning point to take part in God's story of redemption, healing, and uniting. Yes, Paul acknowledges life in this world can present many challenges. Yes, Paul avows violence, injustice continue, and sometimes triumph. But nonetheless, Paul believes that we, people like you and me, have been called and chosen by God. What can we say to these things, Paul writes? If God be for us, who can be against us? God, who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for us all, will God not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is in a position to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, rather, who has been raised, who is at the right hand of God, who intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We belong to God. This is the heart of what Paul believes. We belong to God, not because of anything we do, but because of everything. God has done for us through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, God claims each of us with a wide embrace of unending belonging. The center of any meaningful relationship is a sense of belonging, a sense of belonging together, a sense of belonging to one another. Because of God, because God is our creator, because of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, who reveals all this to us, Paul proclaims and communicates to us 2,000 years later after he wrote this letter that God has done it all so that we will know today we belong to God. We belong to God. We don't belong to the boss or the bank. We belong to God. We don't belong to our addictive impulses or neurotic compulsions. We belong to God. We belong to God in our sickness and in our success, in our failures and in our joys. We belong to God. We don't belong to the political propagandists or the advertising industry. We belong to God. We are not the sum total of our poor choices our painful memories, our bad dreams, 
in our poverty and our abundance and our strength and our weakness in our joy in our sorrow in our fullness in our barrenness in our pain and in our delight we belong to God the reason God gives us this gift of belonging is so that we may answer two of the most important questions of our lives the first is who am I we spend a lifetime trying to figure it out and just when we think we have a grasp on it things change and we have to wrestle with this question all over again who am I we ask this question in middle school and high school when we are trying to figure out how we fit in who am I we ask this question in college when we are trying to decide on a major that may lead to a career do I want to go to business do I want to go into business or do I want to become a professional anthropologist who am I we ask this question when we meet someone and begin to think that this could be the one and I might want to spend my life with this person even if they ask us to move to Detroit who am I when children come along but we try to answer that question but we don't have that much time to think about it who am I we ask this question when we receive bad news experience a tragedy or are forced into a major life change who am I now that I've received this bad news who am I now that I've received this diagnosis who am I without this job who am I when my partner has died who am I we ask this question when we retire and most of the major measures that made us feel productive and meaningful just aren't there any longer who am I it's a profound question and it hardly ever comes by itself it comes with a second question and who is God even people we would not consider religious ask this question who is God to allow this to happen who is God in the midst of all this who is God if not who I thought God was who is God now that I am changing life does not often turn out the way we think it will sometimes it's entirely contrary to our intentions and what we planned God does not give us any guarantees neither does Jesus no guarantees of health success safety nearly everything is up for grabs nobody planned for something like 911 20 years later we are still shocked and saddened by this attack on the United States and we continue to grieve the loss of life and all that happened as a result and nobody planned for the COVID-19 pandemic and it's not over yet in the midst of it all we spend a lot of energy trying to save ourselves we build up our plans we try to construct our lives we hide our weaknesses and our vulnerabilities we do everything to protect ourselves all the while just waiting for it to fall apart we belong to God when we finally get to that point we can let go when we believe that we belong to God we can let go of our pretense when we believe that we belong to God we can grasp a sense of who we are we grasp a sense of identity that is consistent throughout our lives we graft a sense of identity that no matter what no matter what is going on we belong to God we belong to God because of Jesus Christ we belong to God 
This day, we belong to God. Every day, we belong to God. Forever, we belong to God. This is God's doing. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we are grateful for the glorious good news that we belong to you in life and in death. We belong to you. We are grateful for the love that we know through Jesus Christ our Lord and the promise that nothing can separate us from your love through Christ. Nothing. Nothing that we can do will separate us from your love. Nothing that we can say will separate us from your love. Nothing that can happen in this world can separate us from your love. Thank you, O oh God, for your love. May it form us and shape us and always give us a sense of who we are and to whom we belong. We pray for this world, O oh God, that also belongs to you. It is filled with its violence and it's filled with its tragedies. It's filled with its injustices as well. We pray for your kingdom to break out in every corner of this world so that there may be justice and peace. Especially this weekend, we remember the 20th anniversary of 911. 
We continue to be inspired by the brave people who ran into the fire. We continue to grieve the loss of so many people, innocent people. We continue to be struck by the horror of the event and the callousness towards human life. And we pray for our world. We pray that this would never happen again. We are also grateful for those who served in faraway places, Iraq and Afghanistan. And we pray for all who would like to leave those places. May they find safe passage. And may this transition not lead to escalating violence. We pray, O oh God, that during these days we might discover how we belong to one another, how we belong together as a church, and how we belong together as a nation, and how we belong together as the human race made in your image. Lead us, guide us, and direct us, we pray. For Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we offer our praise and thanksgiving, and we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As always, we carve out a moment in our service for us to practice the giving life. And today, let us keep in mind that we belong to God and everything that we have belongs to God. God gives it to us, not for us to keep and not for us to hoard, but for us to use for a while. Even the big things in our lives, we, we don't really have ownership of. God is the owner. God is the creator. God is the blesser. and He blesses us with many, many blessings to use for a while. One of the most important things God wants us to do with the blessings that he gives us is for us to give them as well. As God gave to us, God wants us also to give. So please consider this day, even in this time, giving a portion of what you have been given. Giving a portion of what you have been given to God's work in the world through this church or another church or to an agency or a ministry that's doing God's work in the world. Give a portion. It's symbolic of you giving a portion of yourself to God in gratefulness and thanksgiving, in praise. Let's do it right now. We belong to God. We belong to God. We belong to God's people. We belong to God's story. We belong to one another. This is a truth. This is a truth that God wants us to get deep inside ourselves, deep inside our hearts, our minds, our souls, so that we develop a sense of who we are as first and foremost belonging to God. We belong to God. And that makes a difference in everything that is coming our way. That makes a difference in all our time going forward. Even this week, that makes a difference. 
in how we perceive our world and how we relate to those in our family and our friends and how we go about our work, even how we spend our leisure time and time by ourselves. We belong to God. May this truth reside deep within you and me every minute this coming week. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be and go with you all. Amen.